Hey everybody, welcome to Grayscale Gorilla. I am the Gorilla, and today I wanted to show you a quick little uh, tip in Cinema 4D, uh, how to make an abstract shape and light it really quickly and just play around. I do this a lot when I, uh, you know, I just want to play around with lighting or reflections or textures in cinema. I don't necessarily have a purpose or something specific I want to build. I kind of build this abstract shape I'm about to show you and it's just start to play around with lighting and shadows and different techniques. So I just wanted to show you really quick kind of what I uh, do a bunch of times a week just to kind of play around and get familiar with lighting and stuff. So uh, let's jump on in. I'm not gonna do it super step by step. I'm gonna have the um, key commands and everything so you can follow along, but uh, everything, all the steps should be there for you. So let's jump on in, I'll show you. All right, here we are in, uh, let's get rid of my face. Here we are in Cinema 4D, and uh, first thing you, uh, I do is add a sphere, and the next thing I do is add a, uh, where is it? Taurus. Good. And the one thing I want to do is crank up the um, segments on these because what we're going to do is bend these around and make these really kind of abstract shapes. So you want to make sure there's enough geometry in here to, to play around with, especially the sphere. I'm going to just crank it up. Not too high, but you know, um, we can always adjust this later. But for now, you know, you just want to crank it up. Uh, what I'm going to do is add these to a group, expand it, and I'm going to add a uh, bend deformer into the hierarchy here. And I'm gonna use this angle uh, strength and angle settings to kind of kind of just warp it a little bit. And that's looking, that's looking cool. Uh, and basically all I'm doing is layering uh, these deformers. And I use twist a lot. Uh, I'm gonna put twist below that and I'm gonna spin it. Now you can see it's cutting it off. What I actually wanna do is set this to unlimited so it really gets a cool kind of spiral effect there. Maybe not as much. And uh, I'm gonna duplicate the bend and try to pick like a different angle. Maybe just twist it off this way or something. So, um, you know, that looks kind of cool. Again, you can play around with all these settings and just try to get a shape that you think looks cool and render. And, you know, not too sexy now, but we're gonna add some textures uh, and uh, some lighting into the scene. And uh, we're gonna play, uh, we're gonna make it look good. So first of all, check your resolution. Make sure there's not too many breaks. Sometimes if you stretch things too much, for example, um, you'll get a lot of kind of banding and stuff, but I think we did okay on this one. So let's go ahead and just make a new material. Uh, I'm gonna color it uh, like a kind of a orangish red here. And then in the reflection, uh, I'm just gonna choose Fresnel to get this uh, sexy reflection here. I'm gonna add this to the Taurus. And um, that's it, I'm gonna shut off Specular and I'm gonna actually duplicate this material uh, and just change the color of it. So maybe it's um, like a pale uh, green or something. And I'm gonna make that the sphere. And again, if we hit render, you're gonna see, uh, you know, nothing too crazy. We're just setting everything up. The next thing we wanna do is add our lighting. Uh, and I do that, like I say, this is just kind of what I go through when I'm playing around with lighting and how to use different techniques. I'm gonna make this big soft box up in the sky here. I'm gonna make a new, new material. I'm gonna open the material and turn the luminance to 100%. Throw that up there. And now you can see, starting to get some sexy looking stuff. Uh, the first thing we need to do is uh, turn up the anti-aliasing. Uh, so I'm gonna come into our settings here, go to uh, anti-aliasing, turn it to best. We don't need it full best, we're just gonna go to two by two. So there's one by one by two by two. Just make yours look like that. And those are usually good settings. If you're still getting anti-aliasing jaggy problems, you could crank this number up. But for most things, at least when we're playing around, this looks pretty good. Okay, so uh, we're getting close. We still have the default light on, and that's because we haven't added any actual lights to the scene. But we can actually, uh, in Cinema 11, if you just come in and tick on the, um, go to Effect, Glo Global Illumination, and uh, just have it on, I'm gonna come in here and turn this down to low so we can watch it render quickly. Uh, I'm gonna turn the gamma to 2.2, which, uh, I go through in another tutorial what kind of makes the light uh, bounce further. Uh, and the last thing you need to do if you're on an earlier version is go to options and turn off the um, auto light right there. Uh, you don't have to do this in 11 or further. So, um, so now let's check it out. 
It's going to do the global illumination pass. And you're going to see we're starting to get a pretty cool look here. Uh, it's a little dark down here in the green, but the red is showing up. Um, and basically all we need to do is add more light. So I'm going to take the plane. I'm going to move it um, maybe up front here. I'm going to move it around. And basically you're just building a light studio uh, out of these planes. And I think I've shown you this technique before. But, you know, anywhere you place these planes, the system is going to light from that angle. So now you can see we have a light over here. It's lighting on this side. If we move around, uh, maybe I could shrink our whole model just a bit so we can see what's going on. And I may rotate it, maybe find a better angle. That's kind of cool over here. Let's see what that looks like. So that's pretty cool, actually. I'm liking how that looks. Still a little bit dark, so I'm going to add yet another plane. I'm just going to pull out. I'm going to duplicate and pull this over. I'm actually going to tint this one. I'm going to make a new material. I'm going to come in and tint this just a little bit um, kind of amber colored here just to switch up the lighting. Got to remember no lights are 100% white in real life. Always have a little bit of a color in them. So that may help make it look a little more interesting. Okay, and now we're getting somewhere. The last thing I want to do is um, just kind of center it play around you know and now that we have something to play with um, what I usually do now I, I test out settings so the whole reason I build things like this are now I could come in and, and see what anti-aliasing settings look the best I could come in and um, play around with the global illumination settings maybe I want to see what um, the intensity at 300% looks like what that does to the render, is that too bright? Does that look cool? In this case, that looks pretty cool. We got the reflections here. You can see we're a little dirty up in here. I think that may be too high of a reflection setting. But again, now that you have this, you can play around with different settings. You can actually come in and play with, um, let's see, effect uh, ambient occlusion. I usually turn the accuracy down just so we could see it render quicker. Now you're going to see um, it do the uh, uh, ambient occlusion pass, which you can see takes quite a quite a long time, especially we have so much geometry here. Uh, so long, in fact, that I'm going to shrink this and re-render it. I'm actually going to change this to 60%. And, uh, you know, let's see how that goes a little bit quicker. So you can see now, now you have just this kind of fun shape. It's really simple to play with. And it's also really easy to um, play with the deformers. Uh, in this case, we only use two of the deformers, but um, you can actually apply, you know, as many different ones as you want. It's a good excuse to play around with the deformers and maybe the explode ones or the whatever, right? So uh, you know, I don't know. It's not the most useful functional little thing in here, but um, for me, uh, whenever I want to kind of jump into cinema and I don't know what I want to do necessarily, but I do want to play around with settings. I don't want to use a model, I don't want to whatever. I just kind of make these little abstract shapes and start to play around. And sometimes they look pretty cool. Um, so uh, so I guess that's it. Uh, hopefully you can follow along there, uh, build your own abstract shape, do some lighting techniques on it, and uh, come up with something cool. Uh, do a render, put it on Flickr, put it on your page, and post a link in this, uh, 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 tutorial uh, page here and uh, share what you built. So uh, there you go. Get some primitives, get some uh, get some uh, deformers, and make some abstract shapes. It's uh, pretty fun to play around with. So that's it for today. A little quick one, and uh, hope you guys liked it. I hope to see your shapes, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.